<laughs> do it again. <laughs> do it again. <laughs> this is the 10th step in our van build series, 12 volt electrical. Our 12 volt system in the van is gonna include um, two deep cycle batteries, an inverter to make 120 volts, a system to charge it off the engine battery, an alternator, as well as a little bit of solar. And we will also have some overhead lighting and some lighting over the bunk as well as the ventilation fan. To be able to charge the batteries off of the engine and the engine and alternator in the van, we needed a way to run power from the front of the, front of the van to the back. That's what I have here. So I have the battery, the van battery right here, and a six gauge wire that goes underneath and runs all the way back to the batteries mounted in the rear and the combiner. So to protect that circuit, I have a 150 amp fuse as close as possible as I can get to the batteries. This is about a foot away. So that will protect any all the wiring beyond this point. And to connect up to these to this existing battery, I bought these terminal adapters. Because this is a side terminal battery, and I did not want to buy a new battery that had top terminals as well. So I got these adapters. The batteries we decided to go with in our van are two 12 volt gel cell batteries that are 80 amp hours. We decided to go with gel cells over lead acid because they're sealed and don't vent any hydrogen gas when you're charging them. Um, typically that is not really an issue in like a boat or anything like that, a big open space. But in a small combined box like a van, the hydrogen gas could build up and that could be a little bit dangerous. And rather than having to figure out venting or anything like that, the easiest route was just to go with a sealed battery. And I have these secured with wooden blocks along the bottom, which prevent it from sliding this way or forward or back. And then on the top, I have a very heavy duty ratchet strap. Attach it to the fender here with a big anchor. And anchors to the back through a couple holes I drilled. Since these are 12 volt batteries, to run our 12 volt system, I need to hook these up parallel. So that means the positive of one battery is hooked to the positive and negative, positive of the other battery, and then the negatives are hooked together as well. So that gives us, it doubles the size of your battery bank, but keeps the voltage the same. So this is the main on off switch for all the electrical in the, in the van. So it has a wire coming in from the battery, and then a wire going out to the fuse. There's one additional wire here. And that wire comes from the solar charge controller. So that is also direct. That is connected to the battery side of the switch. Because you do not want to be able to disconnect your solar charge controller because you'll damage the internals. So that is wired in after the battery switch with its own fuse. From the main 150 amp fuse, which protects the primary wiring, we, we go to the inverter. And we also go to the a circuit breaker. So this is a 50 amp self-resetting circuit breaker and that feeds the main 12 volt panel that includes the lights and the fans and things like that. And these are those connectors are soldered on? Yes these are crimped and soldered on. Crimped and soldered? Yeah so I crimped them in a vise and then I solder them together. Okay. Down there you can see my current shunt mounted to the negative terminal of the battery. And there's two wires that come off that current shunt that go up to the end meter. So this thing right here has a wire coming in from the front of the van that we showed you earlier. And it has a wire going back to the, to the, van bat to the house battery. So this is connected to the starter battery and the house battery. And inside this thing is a, couple, is a big relay. So what happens is when the you start the engine in the van, the voltage goes high. This senses that and connects the two batteries together so you can charge them together. And then once you turn off the engine in the van, the battery, the voltage sinks slightly. This senses it and disconnects so that 
you don't run your van starting battery down with your house battery. So it allows you to charge together and discharge separately. So this is our main fuse block. So we have a the battery positive coming in from our 50 amp circuit breaker we saw in the other compartment. And then we have a ground wire and this just goes back to that main grounding point. So right here we have feeds for our different components. We have one here for our gauges and battery meter, another one for the overhead lights, another one for the um, water pump, and then another one for the overhead fan and lights by the bed. And then I have one spare as well. And all of those terminals are crimped on? Yeah, and these terminals are all crimped on because they're small and I have a nice, uh, nice crimper to do that. And so these ones are soldered. These are crimped, and I like this one because it uses just plain old automotive fuses that you can get at any auto parts store. This is our main electrical panel for the van. We have a ammeter voltmeter, battery percentage gauge, and a couple switches here that turn on the panel lights, the back lights here, and the uh, ceiling lights. I have one additional switch here, this big rocker. And that allows me to either read current going into the battery, it's right over almost 0.2 amps from the solar. It's pretty, it's pretty late, so it's not making much. And then if I flip it the other direction, it will tell me current going out of the battery. So I can show you that by flicking on a light. And I can see it's pulling about a half amp out of the battery. So this is just a cheap gauge and it doesn't have this internal circuitry to allow you to measure current in both directions. So I was able to mimic that by using a double pole, double throw switch, which means it has six sets of contacts, and they all and they switch together. So they move from one set of contacts to the other set of contacts. And the, uh, this switch in the middle is kind of in between both. So you can go to the top set of contacts and to the bottom set of contacts. Two wires coming from the shunt. We either go to the bottom set of contacts straight in or it gets switched to the top set of contacts where it gets swapped, where the wires are just literally crossed on the switch then goes into the shunt. Here, I have a switch here to turn off this, the back lights on these gauges, because they get pretty bright at night if you're sleeping. Just a little while. And then I have an additional switch right here to turn the overhead lights on. Do it again. Do it again. <laughs> and this last one here is just a spare. Okay, so the fan. And these two lights. And these two lights. Run off a tan amp, the big tan amp circuit from the fuse block. And so I have the tan amp circuit coming from the fuse block. This wire right here comes from the fuse block comes into this terminal and this terminal. Then it goes through a jumper. So these two terminals, so all these four are connected together electrically, and these four are connected together electrically. So I have the ground from the lights and the fan coming in on this side, and then I have the positive side coming in on this side, so we got the fan, and then the light, and then the other light that's kind of hidden behind there. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below, and if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button.